Okay. Uh, so welcome to Indoor Planting presented by Kate Donovan with Blackstone Valley Veggie Gardens and Stores Library. My name is Lindsay and I'm a library assistant here at the Stores Library. I'd like to thank um, the Friends of the Stores Library for sponsoring tonight's program. And just a little program description, um, Blackstone Valley Veggie Gardens will discuss with us tonight how to grow all kinds of plants from ornamentals to edibles uh, from the comfort of your own home. Grow hy hydroponically or with LED lights, learn all about self-watering plants and soil created especially for indoor growing. The mission at Blackstone Valley Veggie Gardens is to inspire others to grow their own fresh produce. They deliver residential and community-based training, consulting, and assistance in vegetable garden development. They are dedicated to the belief that most people should have the knowledge and opportunity to grow wholesome fruits and vegetables in containers, raids, beds, or in-ground gardens. Kate, welcome, and thank you for joining us. Thank you very much, uh, and it's a pleasure to be here. I'm going to share my screen. Let me yeah, share my screen. Okay. All right, oops. Okay, so hello everyone. I'm Kate Donovan and I have about, I'd say probably, I think there's eight, 19 classes in, in the Blackstone Valley uh, Veggie Gardens portfolio right now. And this one is to help us get through, <laughs> a lot of us it's to help us get through the winter because you know, we certain it certainly is tough when you I, I grow I grow food. Actually, I grow food probably nine, ten months out of the year, but for a lot of us, we really need to bring that greenery indoors. So um, first of all, I just want want you to know that for all of my presentations, I always send out the uh, the PowerPoint for anyone who wants it. So this is my contact information. My, my website is blackstonevalleyveggiegardens.com. And on that website, we have a contact us form. And if you contact me and ask me for the PowerPoint, I will gladly distribute it uh, to you. I'll, se I'll send you the soft copy. Also, I take any questions. This is a fairly high level class on uh, presentation on how to grow a bunch of stuff inside your house. And this, I could, I could do a whole college course on it you know there's so much to it so I'm not going to get to everything so any questions you have please ask me if I don't have the answer I'll find it I do have a very large group on Facebook uh, that's worldwide and deals with uh, growing uh, indoor I mean not, not just specifically indoor gardening but growing all kinds of stuff so uh, Blackstone Valley Veggie Gardens. And if you're up there, you can also see the other presentations that we're doing. We do a lot of Zoom presentations. I think in April, you know, March and April, February, probably six, six, seven, sometimes 10 a month. So things are scaling up. So all kinds of stuff, not just related to this indoor growing, but we have one specifically for house plants, just specifically for ornamentals. We have organic growing, we have composting, all kinds of good stuff. So you can peruse around the website um, and contact me through the contact us, or you can just directly send me an email at bvveggiegardens at gmail.com. Okay, this presentation is on indoor growing and let me get to it, okay? So um, first of all, let's talk about the lighting. And to let you know, um, I, do a lot of, I do a lot of presentations on sustainable growing. And because, because, um, and that's another word for growing, being a cheapskate gardener, which, which is what I am. I, I don't like to spend money on things I don't need to spend money on. And with the price of groceries and things going up, I like to be as frugal, like to, to teach people to be as frugal as they want to be. So uh, with, let's talk about lighting a little. But uh, so, so when you grow things indoors, you can use natural light. If you have a real, I have a friend of mine that has a, uh, a porch built on the back that's, it's huge and it's got natural lighting coming in from three, from Southern, uh, Southern exposure, Eastern and Western exposure. So it gets the whole gamut. 
of the good light. So she doesn't really need to use indoor light. But the, for the majority of us and for a lot of things that you grow, it's not a bad idea to get a light. And depending upon what you're growing depends on the size of the light. I had a friend of mine who wanted to start growing some uh, veggies and she went to do the seed. We'll go over seed starting as well. A lot of people want to start their tomatoes and all that stuff indoors because you can't put them outside to grow. A lot of times they won't make it because our season's so short. So anyway, she wanted a, 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 a small little light to, to, to uh, start her, her seedlings. And we got one done at job lot this past year. It was $25. So you really don't have to go to real expensive lights if you just want to grow a few things. Uh, so if you do want have natural light, you have a really bright window. It, uh, it, you must be bright and, and not really directly in the window. You could burn the plants, but if you have good indirect light, you can, you can try that. But if you're gonna do some lights, if you're gonna use the lights, I like them better. Always use grow lights. And they're not just regular light bulbs. The sun is very different. If you, you know, if you have a camera and take a take a picture indoors and take a picture outdoors, and you'll you, the, the indoor light is a completely different color. It's more yellowish and it's just not as bright as the light out, outside. It doesn't have the same. Uh, color spectrum, it, it just is, is very different. So you want to use a grow light uh, and, and it, it, you'll have a much better outcome. So in the kind that people use nowadays are LED lights, light emitting diode. They're cooler and more effective than the older types. Now, the older types are the, they used, the, I'm, I'm telling, this is not ancient history here, folks. 15 years ago, um, I was still old 15 years ago, but people used to use halogen and metal halide lights to get that grow light effect, to get the lights as bright as they needed to be to have optimal growth. And they were so, that it was so incredibly uh, intensive that it needed a whole electrical ballast that you plugged in. It sucked up a lot of your electricity. And besides, if you were, it, and it was so easy to burn your seedlings and your smaller plants because if they got really hot, you had to constantly watch when they were big and bulky and, and heavy. And then came the, the, um, the fluorescent lights. And I still have some to this day and I still use them. They're fine, but they do get a little bit warmer. So you have the whole, the whole thing is you want the light, but in, but you don't really need a whole heck of a lot of heat. You know, you do need warmth, but you don't need uh, a whole bunch of, uh, you know, the 80, 90 degrees uh, coming, coming in at the plants because they can burn, especially if they're small. And also, um, before you go out and purchase some lights, you got to, you got to, analyze you know what what you're trying to do and and what size if you're going to grow if you're if you're you know if you're going to grow seeds for you know seedlings for a five acre farm you know you're going to need quite a lot of uh of grow lights but if you're only going to if you want to grow some herbs for your house and you don't have good window light and you just want to grow a few you don't need anything big at all so you need one of those $25 ones at the, uh, at the job, job lot. So let's talk about containers, okay? So in the olden days, uh, I, I'm, I'm surprised. I, I went to Italy back in 2019 before COVID and everybody still uses the terracotta pots and they, they're horrible. I'm telling you, they just suck up all the water and, they, and they'll dry out so quickly. I, I, I find it really difficult to grow in them. But somehow I think they have some kind of a uh, oil or something they coat them with before planting, which tends to help. But in any case, I would put these aside and, and people don't use so much the terracotta anymore. They're not really uh, as attractive. And you have so many of the newer style, the resin, that are less expensive, they're not breakable. 
Um, you can use them indoors or you can use them outdoors and leave them out there for the, for the season if you want, you know, for the, even for the winter. But there's a couple of things about uh, these containers I want you to know, regardless of whether they're, what, what they're made of. First of all, you see this little tray down here. That is there to collect the extra water because undoubtedly, you know, sometimes you get distracted or what have you when you're watering your plants and you may have a little extra water. Some people actually water the plants from the bottom. They pour water directly into this little tray. But it's good to have a little tray there. Uh, if you don't have one, however, what a lot of people, but well, first of all, you need it for drainage because if you flood, your plant out and there's no way for that uh, the, the water to escape, the roots will rot. Roots cannot, roots need to breathe. They need to, they don't grow in the soil. They grow in the little, little air pockets uh, in the, you know, between the, the, the pebbles or the, the, uh, the pieces of the earth. So uh, you definitely uh, need to make sure the area. So if you don't have a tray on the bottom, what some people do is they fill the container probably about two or three inches with pebbles. Therefore, any of the extra rain will, uh, you know, uh, any of the extra watering that you do with doing indoor, any of the extra watering will just come down here to the bottom and eventually it will wick up and, and end up watering the plant. But what you don't want to do is have a closed, you know, uh, container uh, with no, nothing to, no drainage. Okay, also another thing about plants is that, that you see a whole bunch of different sized plants in you know, uh, different sized pots in the store and find out how big a pot you need in order to grow the plant you wanna plant. Because if the pot isn't big enough, then the, the plant is gonna become root bound. And what happens is when the plant's growing, the roots go around, they start circulating and they grow around and around in the pot and they'll strangle and kill itself, suicide by, by roots. So plants aren't very, very smart, so they'll kill themselves. So you wanna stay away. You wanna make sure you have the right pot. The reason, and I'm gonna do a little bit of a deeper dive into two types of plants uh, and, and you'll see them. One of them is, one of them are herbs and the other are greens typically in the grand scheme of thing, you can do both of them without huge, huge pots. So, and I'll explain that as we, as we go along. Also, um, here are some resin, resin pots down here. These are just a plastic, I guess resin is, is like a plastic. They come with, a lot of times they come with drainage holes. If they don't, you have to put pebbles in the bottom. But I've done, see this one um, right here on the left, it really looks like a whiskey barrel planter. I wish I had some real whiskey barrel planters, but they're very expensive. So what I've done in those, oh, here's another one here, whiskey barrel planter, is I've planted a variety of herbs in here. And, and uh, I have a, I'm a, I'm a real gardener, so I have a commercial, you know, business. And I've sold those to different places, you know, uh, senior centers and, in you know, a, a few uh, universities, et cetera that use them for the, for the kitchen, you know, and, and they have a whole, you know, bunch of different herbs growing and they can grow them indoors as well. So there's several different varieties and shapes of the resin and make sure you know, like I say, what size. For example, a uh, lettuce only needs five, six inch pot. So very small. So, and if you, and the reason why you don't grow, obviously grow, uh, all kinds of, uh, I'm, I'm trying to think of something that has a big one. Cabbage, for example. Cabbage has a, a huge, it's a green. I guess you could see it's more, it's a brassica family, but the root ball is huge and it needs at least a good four to five gallon. So stick with the greens and the, if you're gonna grow this way uh, indoors, stick with the, the greens and the herbs at first. Don't be discouraged though. I mean, you do you do some research and there are some tomatoes, uh, tiny, tiny Tims. There's one called 42 day tomato. So these are varieties, dwarf plant varieties that are specifically hybridized 
in order to be uh, planted in containers. So there are some you can do. So in any case, one thing people like to do is they like to start their seeds indoors. There are a few plants that we have that cannot be started here in, here in, in Longmeadow anyway, same as Blackstone here in Massachusetts, we can't direct sow them into the ground because our season is not long enough. And those are basically members of the nightshade family, your tomatoes, your peppers, your eggplants. Every once in a while you get, uh, you'll, if you grow outdoors, you'll see a tomato has, has uh, fallen, a tomato seed has, has a tomato fell out there when you were doing your harvest and you get a lot of these little volunteers here plants to come up. But basically by the time the soil is warm enough for them to germinate in the soil and come to fruition, it's already November and you, get, you have your first freeze. So, uh, so basically we start them indoors and we start them indoors probably around sometime in March. There are several other types of seed, seeds as well um, that can be grown, started indoors and, and transplanted outdoors. Those are uh, peas and beans, although they get lanky and they may tangle up with each other. And your, your cucurbit family, your watermelon, your squash and your cucumbers can also be started indoors. But if they're started indoors, they have to be started no more than three or four weeks before they're planted outdoors because they don't really like it. You just want to give them a little bit of a heads up. And um, I'm not sure, if there's two slides in this, I'm not sure if it says, but um, once your plants are ready to be planted outdoors, you have to acclimate them slowly but surely to the outdoor temperatures. So the first day you bring them outside for a little bit of time and then bring them in. And then the second day you bring them outside for maybe two or three hours and then bring them in. And within a week's time, you'll be able to transplant them outside, but don't rush it because they'll go into transplant shock. And that process is called hardening off. And by the way, we do have a separate presentation specifically on indoor seed starting. So if you're more, if you're really interested in the details of this particular piece of the program, please send me an email um, and I'll send you uh, the presentation. We, I can also send you um, one of the videos from the web because we do have several on indoor seed starting. Uh, typically, my associate Eric does that that program. So let's talk about indoor seed starting. Okay, and you can do indoor seed seed starting. I'm a I'm a food grower. I mean, I do. I mean, I have house plants and I I do ornamentals and and I love flowers. But um, but basically, you can certainly start anything you want um, indoors. As you know, you can you, you can you a lot of times you know we food growers if if we're going to plant our tomatoes or you know, anything food related outside. We also plant marigolds because, you know, they deter the pests. So uh, you can certainly plant your, your flowers this way as well, you know, if you don't have the kind of flowers that you plant, you know, with bulbs. So, so purchase your seeds from a trusted source. Better yet, save your own seeds from the previous year. And uh, there's a little bit of a trick to that, but you know, definitely save your own seeds, uh, you know, and that, that's, a, that's the best and cheapest way to go about it. And like I say, I'm a, I'm a real cheapskate. The fresher, high quality seeds will have a higher germination rate. The average seed pack, now this is on the average. These plants are different, have a different life cycle. So on the average, we'll say up to three years, you can save your seeds, three to four years, but they don't all die off at once. So if your seed pack is getting kind of old, just um, maybe put, instead of putting two to the hole, maybe you'll put three to the hole and see if you, know, if you have a fallout from that. So uh, let's, talk about, uh, let's talk about the seed places that I go to. Just for, for example, I go to Little Shop of Seeds. Those are full-size seed packs, heirloom varieties, 75 cents a pack. And dollarseed.com, obviously those are dollar pack. Also, MI as in Michigan, migardener.com, those are basically $2 a pack for all heirloom varieties. So uh, definitely cheap out because you can, I still remember paying like $6 to get a pack of seeds that was a burpee pack of seeds. 
and it's a really good company. And uh, I don't know why I'm, I'm spending all this money. It was a special, special type of beat called the Chioga beat. It's an Italian beat. It has red and white rings and it's just absolutely beautiful. But anyway, I've got a thousand beet seeds in the pack. Now who, who, who can use a thousand beet seeds? They have a three year lifespan, right? So it's, I had a, obviously I'm, I'm a big seed swapper too. So I, I traded them with friends for other, other stuff. So anyway, get, get your cheat, uh, get your seeds at, uh, at as inexpensively as you can, if you haven't grown your own. So pot with some seeds to, if you're plant, planting your seeds to germinate, you know, to start your seeds, to, to plant outdoors or what have you, it's not a bad idea to use a seed starting mix. A seed starting mix is a sterile plant medium. It is not dirt. It's a sterile plant medium. It's probably something like a, I'm trying to think, peat moss, or sometimes it's full of uh, vermiculite and sandy material, but it doesn't have a lot of nutrition. There's a reason for that because when seeds are germinating, they actually are being fed by the, by the chaff of the seed, by the hard en encasement of the seed itself. So uh, it doesn't really need anything. And you don't want to put it in, you know, heavy soil so it doesn't find its way out of the ground. You know, it, so it, you don't, you don't want to use heavy soil. You also don't want to use soil with a bunch of fertilizer. Why? Because, I mean, take, take a, these are babies. These are little tiny seed, you know, seeds. You, you wouldn't feed. I have a granddaughter. God bless her. She's about a month old. I certainly wouldn't feed her a T-bone steak because it has a lot of protein, you know, same thing. You, you have to baby these, these plants. So anyway, you use a seed starting mix. You can make your own, Google it. Uh, it's basically sand, uh, peat moss, and maybe a little bit of uh, compost as well, or some vermiculite or perlite, pretty easy. Or you can buy some uh, seed starting mix. You can buy it from job lot and, and do the cheap thing. Uh, not, not a worry, $2, $2 that you can get it for $2 a bag. Uh, so also um, when you're st starting the seedlings, make sure that the containers have drainage holes. Uh, you, can use, you can use these flats. These are seed starting flats. They probably have, you know, I got some for Christmas, you know, my wonderful daughter, because I go through a lot of them. So mine, mine are a little bit smaller than this, but this one probably has 70, 72 holes in it to plant, you know, 72 different plants in there. So um, you, can, you can use the flats or you can use empty yoga containers, but make sure you, make sure if you use something that's not stock, it's not meant for seed starting, that you poke some holes in the bottom or you'll drown out your, your seedlings. Um, plastic six packs and flats are good and they can be reused year after year. They're not as sturdy. I mean, you, they'll last a couple of years and then they'll start to break up a little. Also, they do have the little seed starting flats like this that are made of peat moss material. Some are made of a, uh, a compost, compostable material, not stinky like, like uh, you know, with manure in it, but it is a compostable material. So when you go to transplant it outside, you transplant the, and you bury the whole pot in the, in the, in the, in the biodegrade, it, you know, decomposes in the soil and, and the roots take off and, and grow deep into the soil. Also make sure you plant the seeds at the proper depth. So uh, if it's a big seed, you can plant it deeper. If it's a small seed, such as an herb seed, basically you, you may go a, a quarter of an inch down, that's it. Because those are tiny little seeds. If you plant it way down and it's trying to uh, emerge and to sprout, and it has to go through two inches of soil, it's gonna peter out before it gets to the top. So on the, on the package of seeds, it'll tell you the, the proper depth to plant those seeds. If you don't have a package, you know, if you've got the cheap, the inexpensive seeds and it doesn't come with planting instructions, just go up on the web. And I find a lot of information at uh, Farmer's Almanac online. So they'll tell you how deep to plant any seed. Also, after you originally fill these puppies up with, uh, with the soil, with the seed starting and you, and you plant them, you don't leave them under the lights. It sounds, 
you know, intuitive that you would leave them in the lights, but you don't. After sewing, you set the containers up in a, in a warm location without lights, because what happens is if they start, these seeds uh, and these tender little plants start trying to go uh, towards the light, they're gonna grow spindly and they're gonna get thin and they're gonna burn themselves out. So what you wanna do is until they germinate, until they make it up to the top, you wanna leave them in a fairly fairly warm and fairly dark uh, uh, place because they, they do not need light in order to germinate. Once they pop up, then you put them under the light. This is an expensive unit, by the way. And these lights right here, that the higher the plants grow, uh, you see the, the chains over here, you can, you can raise this light up. Uh, you know, so, so if you don't get around to it or it's lousy weather and you don't get around to planting your tomatoes, you wait for the, you know, you can, and they're growing pretty tall, you can raise this, this the lights up on it. So, um, okay, so let's go through the next part. And also, oops, yeah, okay, also you got to keep the seed mix moist. You know, your, your, your sprayer is your, your best friend. Just, you know, spray the, spray the seedlings. You don't need to buy, even buy a sprayer there. I can get 350 at Home Depot, what have you. But if you have an old bottle of Windex that's empty, you just wash out the bottle and you can use something like that as well. They do need, once they dry out, you have a little seedling. And, and if you let it dry out by mistake because you forgot to water it, it's dead. And it ain't coming back. So you, you might've missed your window of opportunity because all this stuff is very date driven. Uh, so as soon as the seeds emerge, you put them in the bright location under the lights. A cool room is best for the seedlings. You know, you don't want them to overheat. And then once, once you get a couple, of, a couple of sets of leaves on here, you can begin to fertilize with a seedling fertilizer, which is very mild. It's like a regular, regular fertilizer that you use for tomatoes, but they sell it specially uh, that that is more mild so that it can help the little the little plants grow without burning them out. So and if you have to thin them, sometimes you you know like carrots, you, you want to plant them and you know you know that carrot seeds are so small, you usually plant them too close and sometimes you have to thin them and you have to take the uh, leave the strongest of the seeds. so so, that's the seed starting. And by the way, if you have any questions, please put it in the um, in the chat, or we'll take we'll take some after the presentation. Now let's talk a little bit about something that is near and dear to me: herbs. I've I've sold a lot of herb plants in my life, and I'm I'm still learning. There's so much more to learn, but I'm eating well because they certainly do liven up the most boring of uh, uh, dishes. And now that I have I had a ham for Christmas. I'm going to be making a pea soup, which is really a very bland thing. But when you stick some thyme in it and and uh, some lemon balm or some uh, basil, maybe sage, uh, it, it can taste pretty good. So, oops, bear with me here. Okay, okay, very good. Sorry about that. So we're going to go over herbs, and we're going to go over some greens as well. These greens can be grown indoors. Um, okay, so. Greens, this uh, gr greens are the greens are the, the healthiest food you can eat. They have basically no calories. They have more uh, minerals, nutrients per calorie than than any other food. And you know, people go on a lot of these diets, and you know, Weight Watchers or uh, South Beach and keto and all that other stuff. But no one el ever tells you to stay away from green leafies. So they're very good for you. Uh, and what you, the way you do them when you grow indoors, basically the same way you do them outdoors, you use the cut and come again method. What I do when I have a head of lettuce is I take the older leaves from the outside and I snap them off. And then, uh, and then you know, you continue to snap off from the outside and, and it'll keep growing from the inside. You just basically the most nutritious way to to eat is to uh, take the nutrients and take only as much of the plant as you need at a time. So a handful of this, a handful of that, and leave the rest, you know, to continue growing. And by thinning the plants, you know, the greens, 
uh, they'll actually like it and they'll continue to grow and they'll be very vibrant. Some of them can grow up to a year uh, as opposed to in the garden where they, they only last, uh, the lettuce probably last three or four months and then it goes, goes to seed. So let's talk a little bit about um, herbs. And the best thing about herbs is I think they think they're humid. So they, they, they grow very well indoors because they think they're human, like I say. What, what, when, you know, what uh, temperature do you take, you know, do you grow, uh, keep your house? I, I'm sure it's probably somewhere between 55 and 70 degrees. Well, that's, you know, how the herbs like it. The only except, exception to that is the basil. Basil is a little bit trickier. It likes it warm, it, it, you know, and it, it doesn't do well when it's in the, in the 60s, you know, if you like to save a little bit of money. Uh, on your heat and you like to dip the, the temperatures down at night. Also remember this, if you're doing the window method, if it's a, make sure you, this is New England folks, make sure you don't have that, uh, the plant too close up against the window because it's going to get cold and it's not, and they won't, they won't like it. Uh, you know, they'll have some damage from the cold, especially in the winter. Because even if your your uh, room is warm, your your window sure does feel that uh, the the coolness. So um, herb indoor plants that you grow herbs will be will they'll be stretchier, a little spindly spindlier than the plants you grow outdoors. But you can certainly take clippings, just like the greens cut and come again. You cut it and it'll continue to grow. And these are the plants that I have grown indoors, the herbs, basil, parsley, chives, celery, celery, yes, oh, those of you who haven't grown it, celery is herbaceous, it's actually in the, the parsley family, thyme, mint, cilantro, dill, lemongrass, cumin, rosemary, spearmint, sage, lemon balm, oregano, and chamomile. You can have a grand old thyme. Let's go over, uh, so those are the herbs and the greens. Those are your main food groups that are easy to grow and let's keep it simple, you know, especially for beginners, we'll keep it simple. Now I'm gonna go over, go over a couple of uh, ways that people are kind of expanding into the indoor, indoor arena. So uh, the people are doing the hydroponics and, and it's really common, it used to be a foofy, you know, expensive, hobby, but now you can get a, I got a, I got a hydroponic planter for, for $35. It's kind of an older model. It is an aero guard, but I got it from Facebook, uh, uh, Facebook groups, you know, one of the yard sale groups, but I think even the new ones cost a couple of hundred bucks, but you can grow a lot of stuff with them and I'll show you that. So they all have the built-in lights and they have timers. So, you know, when you're growing something, whether, whatever, whatever you grow, you can grow flowers in this. But when you grow something here, you're going to try to mimic uh, the natural light. So you don't want to give it light 24-7. The sun isn't out 24-7. So uh, this timer knows what it's doing. So you tell the timer what it's growing, and it'll automatically turn off and turn on the lights of, of the unit. This is a very expensive unit. This is a, uh, and you know, People garden for a hobby, and some people garden because they want uh, they they want to be able to save money on food. This there's a very long return on investment when you grow a, a tower garden, but I wanted to show you anyway how it works. So uh, these are light. This this is a this is a unit uh, that's electric, and the water goes up, uh, and you put nutrients in it, and that that nutrients they grow up through these this plumbing, these pipes, and it, and it splashes down on the inside of this tube and it wets the roots. There's no soil used in this. You'll see, I have actually have a video on it. And that's how it works. You can grow all kinds of stuff in here. You see right here, basically it, go, it is awesome for herbs and, and greens. Can you try to grow a smaller tomato variety? Or Yeah, you can try, good luck. I mean, some people do, it may take trial and error. But this is, and it, and it uses this, these, these are the tonics that it uses. No soil, but you put these tonics, these fertilizers in this little bin here and, uh, and it, and it uh, mixes with the water and it goes up through this plumbing unit and then 
it splashes down on all the roots that are on the inside. And it uses these material. This is vermiculite, which is a small pebbly uh, type of material. Rock wool is a non-nutrient. It's actually probably made of wool, uh, has no nutrition to it. These are net pots and these are the seeds. And this is a video I wanted to show you. So this is how it's done, so. Congratulations on assembling and filling your new tower garden. Now you're ready to grow. So let me show you the most successful way to prepare and plant seedlings in your tower garden. First, take the seed starter tray provided with your tower garden grow growing system and thoroughly wet the rock wool starter cubes. If possible, use filtered water or bottled drinking water without chlorine. Let them soak for 30 minutes. Next, you're ready to add your seeds into the seed holes in the rock wool starter cubes, per instructions on your seed packet. After you've added your seeds, lightly fill each seed hole with the vermiculite included in your tower garden growing system. For smaller seeds, like lettuce, only fill the hole half full with vermiculite. This will keep just enough moisture around the seed for good germination. It may be helpful to label the rock wool so you know where each seedling is growing. Now, gently sprinkle a little water over each hole to wet the vermiculite. When you've finished, add a little water in the bottom of the container for extra humidity. Do not close the lid. If it's a warmer time of year, place your seeding tray outside in a semi-shaded area. If it's a colder time of year, place your seeding tray inside by a sunny window. Each morning, be sure there is about one quarter inch of fresh water in the bottom of the tray. After your seeds have sprouted through the vermiculite, immediately move them to a full sun area outside once all danger of frost has passed. You can add the diluted tower tonic solution from your nutrient reservoir every other morning to the seed tray in place of fresh water. Once your seedlings are approximately three inches tall, they should be healthy seedlings with a good root system growing from your rock wool cubes. At this point, your seedlings are ready for transplanting in your tower garden. Place one seedling cube inside each net pot on the tower garden. Gently press the seedling cube until it touches the base of the net pot. Otherwise, the seedlings will not get watered. If you don't have time to start your own seedlings, it's possible to use seedlings purchased from a local garden center. You should consider that you may run the risk of introducing plant diseases or insect pests into your aeroponic tower garden taking this approach. Purchase the smaller plugs. Look for the nine cell pack. If you place the plug directly into the net pots, the soil will wash out and clog the pump. So it's important to remove the plug from the tray and gently wash off the roots, massaging away the soil. Be careful not to damage the roots. Soak your rock wool cubes in filtered or bottled water and cut them in half. Lay out the two halves and gently place the root system on one half of the rock wool cube. Then place the other half of the rock wool cube over the roots to create a sandwich of rock wool around the root system. Use a rubber band or small hair band to hold the rock wool cube together. Insert the new transplant into the tower garden net pot at each planting port. Be sure to push down the rock wool so it touches the bottom of the net pot. This will ensure that the new transplant receives water inside the tower garden. Congratulations! Your tower garden is now operational and ready to grow. Okay, so that's a pain, right? I mean, you have to start them outside the unit. And I mean, it can take a little bit of time. But I have a friend that has fresh greens for her for her salads and you know spinach for her soup and all kinds of stuff all year round. So this is the easy one. Uh, this is the this is the hydro part. This is the Aero Guard. This is the one I have. Believe me, uh, like I say, I spent thirty five dollars on it and um, on a, on a used one. Uh, you know, at one hundred ninety nine dollars, if you want to grow, if you if you're that into it, it, it's a good thing. However, you know, take you got to grow a lot of greens to make it probably a five-year return on investment on a unit like this. And this is the way you do it. As you see the, the, the third unit here, those are plugs. You take these plugs, you put in a seed, and then you put the whole plug into one of these little baskets. 
cover it up with one of these uh, labels, stick it in the unit and put a, a, a top over it so that you'll get the greenhouse effect and you'll get the condensation. So it'll keep it warm and, and start it growing. And you plant it uh, with a little bit of the liquid plant food. So for this unit, you can start them right as seeds. You don't have to do the, uh, you don't have to do all that rock wool and vermiculite and all that kind of stuff. This is easy peasy. If you want, you can buy these, these, these little plant kits with already with seeds in them. All you have to do is stick them in the unit and, and, and uh, pour in water and nutrients and turn it on. So it's all, all in what, all in what you want to do. I would never do that because I like to grow my own stuff. I mean, you get, you get a package that says lettuces or uh, gourmet herbs or gourmet greens, you know, and you, you take what they give you. I like to, I like to mix it up because it's more of a challenge to me, but some, some people, you know, do that. And plus I have, I probably have about a thousand, literally a thousand packages of seeds. So so um, here is a video just to show you real quickly. Um, and as I say, right here, you see, this is LED lighting and it goes up and down. Also, it has the, 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 the controls on here. So you tell it what you wanna grow and you press the button and it will know when to turn the light on and when to turn the light off. So it's kind of hands off. You do have to you know, remember to put the food in, the, the fertilizer in and uh, the water. But there's, a, there's an indicator that'll tell you to do that. So just check it in the morning. I think it probably maybe once a week you have to do it. So here you go. You can grow flowers in this as well, or, or, uh, plant. garden people do real real well around the holidays believe me there's enough advertisements for them i think people appreciate getting it as a gift and other people want something that's you know uh that people will use so so that's about it um as i say we we went over indoor seed starting different kinds of pots uh the what you can grow herbs and uh, greens easily and then some hydroponic solutions uh, what kind of questions do we have? Um, I can look in the chat. Let's see if we have any questions. Do I have, ex Michelle, Michelle is asking, do I have experience with Aero Garden? I have a little bit of experience with Aero Garden. Uh, yes, they actually have a new, uh, they're coming up with new models all the time. They actually have a new uh, model, a new, ins it's an insert on the top that allows you to start seeds for transplant outdoors. The, the, the one they have, you know, that it comes with is to grow plants from all the way from seed to fruition under those lights. But they do have units now uh, that allow you to, to grow seeds, you know, to transplant outdoors. Uh, do you have a source to buy Aragon? Michelle, yeah, send me an email. I did. I, I you know, I, I got the used one and I got the sponges and uh, the, the little baskets. And I didn't buy them from AeroGarden because they were too expensive. I got them from Amazon, but I'll send you the links. Just send send me a, a, an email, and I'll, I'll and I'll do that. Um, so so Samantha asks, what will what would be the other? Do I have uh, mold issues with AeroGarden? No, I don't have mold issues with AeroGarden. But every time uh, you know, I I give it a I give it a break. Uh, it needs, it does definitely need to be clean. So definitely make it clean well. And you use new 
new baskets and new pods every time. It's not like you have a bunch of soil sitting around from season to season. So it's much easier to clean out. Samantha asked, what would be the best thing to grow in an arrow garden? I would think that you can use, uh, you can easily grow greens and you can easily grow herbs in an arrow garden. Anything else, like I say, you know, there are very, very small versions, certainly not, certainly not carrots or anything that's gonna, you know, be a, be a, a root veggie. You can certainly grow uh, small, you know, small flowers uh, there as well. Uh, so, you know, herbs, greens, and uh, some small ornamental flowers as well, I think were the best. Um, and the formula for making your own seed uh, starting, um, I would think that you would use not a third compost. For, make, for a seed starting mix, you would use the majority of about 70% peat moss. If you don't wanna use peat moss, sphagnum peat moss comes in a big bale, you get it in a bag. You can use co coco coir, C-O-I-R, and that's the majority of it. And you may put some, uh, you could put in some vermiculite or some, or some perlite in there. I use them as the same there for drainage. You can use that. And you, a little bit of compost, you really don't need a lot of nutrition while they're in the, the babies from the, uh, uh, in the baby stage. So you can use a little bit of a, a touch of compost. And for compost, basically I use my own. Hopefully everybody composts. It's not, it's not that, that difficult. But if not, you can get a bag of something. And if you're gonna grow indoors, you certainly don't wanna get the black cow that I use for outdoors because black cow is made from, from uh, cow manure and it sure is stinky outside, uh, probably worse inside. So you can certainly make that. Or they have you know, the uh, miracle Grow brand does have an organic uh, uh, seed starting mix. And so does, oh, what's the other one? Oh my goodness, I can't think of the name. But you can get, you get some of that stuff, uh, the, the, uh, the seed starting mix already made up at, you can go to Home Depot, you can get it at a job. Cheapest place to get that stuff is job lot. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't think twice about it. Um, Okay, Does that, are there any other questions? If anyone can ask, um, if you wanna unmute or, or write it in the chat. Okay, that's fine. Um, yeah, yeah, so, all right, let me just see here if, um, okay, let me make sure I give you my contact information again. If you want the presentation, uh, my name is Kate Donovan. This is my, uh, my website. You can cruise the website and contact me via the contact us tab. This is my email. If you have any questions about the presentation or you want the soft copy, if you do want to see the list of events we have going on, people are still doing Zoom. And um, if you know, I have a whole bunch of stuff going on feel free to, um, you know, to pipe into that as well on my website. Uh, does anybody have any other questions? Um, Kate, I just wanted to mention that um, I think you're doing another program in February, Companion Planting and Design. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Um, so Great. we have that uh, February 22nd um, at 630. So if um, you want to register on the website, people can do that already. Yeah. Yeah, so companion planting is a great uh, course as well. And that, that'll save you some time. And it'll save you some energy because what you want to do is grow plants that get along with each other or else you'll be fighting an uphill battle. And you may as well have some plants do, do the work for you. So that's a great, uh, a great opportunity to, um, to learn about companion planting and designing your garden. And uh, definitely do that. The time to do that is January, February, so it's it's ideal. So, any other questions, comments? Very good, then. Thank right. you very much. Oops, sorry. Oh, thank you so much, Kate. This was great. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you.